Lane Kiffin nailed yet another offseason hire. I mean, what a time to be alive, Rebel fans. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin yelling yet another offseason hire by bringing in portal czars like Alex Brown from SMU. We look at where Lane Kiffin has done the best work in staff additions this spring, and Ole Miss also took a series from the ranked South Carolina Gamecocks in baseball. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. The Grove Collective, they're doing their March to Victory campaign this month. What does that mean? Well, it is a new bracket-style campaign from the Grove Collective designed to raise at least $10 million in the month of March or 10,000 total members by the end of March. It's a March Madness-type competition that pits regions against each other to see who can give the most to Ole Miss sports. The Sweet 16 ends today. Let's keep Ole Miss athletics at the forefront and go to thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory. Again, that's thegrovecollective.com slash march to victory to help make this happen. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps and on YouTube, so thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day, and a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Interesting weekend. I, I was beginning to wonder going into this Monday show if we were going to have a lot to talk about, and especially about football because, you know, football kind of moves the needle. And Ole Miss is hiring Alex Brown from Southern Methodist. He's the general manager, the general manager at SMU. He is going to join Billy Glasscock at Ole Miss. And Ole Miss fans are not going to really understand what's going on. This is an off-the-field role. Why should we be impressed by this? Why is this a segment one portion of your podcast? A lot of people aren't going to understand what's happening here. They're not. They're going to talk about it. They're going to gloss over and they're going to move over just like Ole Miss if they hired a video coordinator or a new manager or a new head trainer. They would just kind of admit it, move on to the next thing and something they're more comfortable talking about. But Austin Brown coming from SMU, this is a big deal. And, and Austin Brown started at Rice. He ended up at SMU and he, through his scouting and his use of the transfer portal, has risen SMU to a fringe um, New Year's New Year's Six level for a football program. This is SMU. This is since they got the death penalty 40 years ago or 35 years ago, whenever that was in the mid to late 80s. They've been a middling program that occasionally would get up with the big boys. Now, in this age of NIL, they decided to go all in at SMU. And part of that was hiring a general manager in charge of their personnel department that is really good with the transfer portal. He's able to scout and bring in people in the transfer portal. Well, why is this important for the Portal King? Because if we're calling the Portal King because he likes the transfer portal. Whenever we're in a situation where players can essentially transfer twice a year, every year, you need a lot of eyeballs on this situation. You don't just need one person. Billy Glasscock at general manager would be a phenomenal hire by himself two years ago when this couldn't happen. Now that this workload has gone up, the personnel department needs to go up with it. And this hiring of Alex Brown is going to allow that to happen. You might see a situation inside Ole Miss's personnel department to where Billy Glasscock is doing some of the high school and some of the transfer portal, and he's doing all the stuff that Austin Thomas did a year ago 
And then you have Austin Brown that's kind of doing special projects, specialty projects to try and find players in the transfer portal that can lift Ole Miss up. Now, you see people all the time talking about how Ole Miss is going all in for 2024. This is not a 2024 hire. This is a 2025 and beyond hire. These people are designed to get the roster in the future at a higher level, not this current team, because this is currently the 2024 team. Now, will he have an, have an impact in the end whenever the transfer portal window opens up the 15th through the 30th? Yes, probably. And he probably has an idea of what could happen. And he probably also has a relationship with Keon Russell, the Southern Methodist University commit, who is a really, really good quarterback. Go back a couple of days and look at our highlights on him. And we had Brian Smith on set Sunday night talking about him and what type of a player he could be. I think that was last night. That is going to be an ancillary benefit, but his work in the transfer portal is where he's going to make his bones. Now, if you look online, Matt Zenitz was the, um, I think he was the first one. I, like I said, I don't necessarily care about who's first or even who says it, just that they say it. Um, it says Ole Miss is expected to hire SMU's Alex Brown in a high-ranking personnel and recruiting job, sources tell. Brown, who has been an SMU as a general manager and senior director of scouting and player personnel, has been a key part in their roster construction that has contributed to the Mustangs, improving from seven wins in 2022 to 11 a year ago. This will add another respected piece to the personnel and recruiting department under Lane Kiffin and new Ole Miss GM Billy Glasscock. All right, so this is from Zach Barry, who is from On3, the Ole Miss spirit. He says that Ole Miss is hiring SMU Senior Director of Scouting and Player Personnel, Alex Brown, but there's a quote here to where he interviewed Billy Embody. And he says, furthermore, on three's Billy Embody reports he accepted the job earlier this week. Alex led SMU through a critical period of roster construction as Rhett Lashley took over the program, especially using the transfer portal. He's got an eye for finding talent that is underappreciated or underutilized elsewhere and he brings them in, seeing positive results on the field in those ap ap acquisitions. His process that he put into SMU's scouting department was important with regards to the staff that worked the portal and how they worked the portal and how he was organized on that front when the portal opened and players entered. SMU's board was already stacked. His strong point is definitely scouting, which in today's age of rosters turning over quickly is important. We always talk all the time about how Lane Kiffin is an early adopter. And the reason that in all of this chaos, he's doing very well is because he's an early adopter. And this is a sign with the way that he sees the winds blowing with the transfer portal and the unlimited transfers to happen. He realizes he's going to need more bodies monitoring that situation, scouting those players, and having a stacked list to pull from. This is a major, major hire for Lane Kiffin. Potentially one of the top five off-season hires that he has made this year. You know what? In this next segment, I know we said we were going to talk about um, the transfer portal and basketball, but we're going to hold that off for another day. We're going to talk about the top five most important hires for Lane Kiffin this offseason and where exactly Alex Brown and Billy Glasscock fits into that scenario. I'm going to do some stream of consciousness talking. I'm not necessarily overly prepared for that. So you're going to see Stephen Willis raw, essentially. So we'll see exactly what happens there. But Alex Brown being hired by Lane Kiffin as a transfer portal type czar is a major, major deal for Ole Miss football. I'm pretty, pretty fired up about that. Thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. Um, the transfer free is, everyone can transfer free is changing college football. So it's important that uh, assistants aren't just on the field. Who are the most important in 2024? and beyond 
Where does Alex Brown sit? Where does Billy Glasscock? We'll talk about that in just a second. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we are, we are picking a team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than all of the rest. Just like any of the all-new Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Utah State Aggies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised all of us with a powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, and Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV is offering amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as with the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a live Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to, to deliver constant supplies of the latest videos from your latest sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and plus most of all the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a lot more not to mention all the news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on the Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Mark your calendar for Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show today. Right now, it's starting at 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket to prepare your team for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown today on Locked On College Basketball Podcast wherever you get your podcast. So we're through a curveball right now. And it was like, hey, what are the five best offseason acquisitions for Lane Kiffin on the coaching staff this year? And we're just going to talk about the top five. And it's a top five list that's going to consist of like George McIntyre, Zach Arnett, um, Billy Glasscock, Ox, Austin Brown, and B. Brown, and all of those coaches in there. It, this is the acquisitions that we're going to be talking about. We're going to start with number five, George McDonald, the wide receivers coach. And this is important because of how important the wide receiver position could be for Ole Miss in 2024. As far as looking at what Ole Miss could, could be right now in 2024, Jordan McDonald is in a position to help Trey Harris. He's in a position to help Juice Wells. He's in a position to help Jordan Watkins, Deion Smith, those guys. This room that has a chance to be one of the best wide receiver rooms in college football, he has a chance to help those guys out. George McDonald is coming in at number five. Do not think that we're discounting him as a coach. He's a really good hire. And it seems like every time that Lane Kiffin is asked to make, it, make a coaching hire, he just hits a home run out of the park every single time. And I'm pretty excited about what George McDonald can do, but I want to see what he does with Trey Harris. I want to see what he does with Deion Smith, Juice Wells, Jordan Watkins, those guys, and developing players like Aiden Williams, Caden Lee, those guys. The slot receivers in a George McDonald um, offense has done pretty well. So look at Caden Lee, look at Jordan Watkins, look at somebody like Juice Wells ending up on the inside as well. That is my heads up to everybody there. Number four, I'm going to say Zach Arnett, the analyst. And everybody's like, what? He's an analyst. Zach Arnett is a linebacker whisper. He, you know, what he's did with Bookie Watson and Jet Johnson at Mississippi State, those weren't the most talented linebackers, but he took them and made them elite linebackers. Jet Johnson is just kind of a dude. 
He's a guy that might end up on a practice squad of an NFL team and just through heart and guts has a chance to make it. Well, Zach Arnett made him a legitimate piece. And his use of linebackers in blitzing schemes and off the edge is something that will be a little bit different for Pete Golding and honestly B. Brown as this defense gets constructed. Zach Arnett is not an on-the-field role, but he's somebody that's looking at film. He's doing some self-scouting, and he's essentially a volunteer assistant linebackers coach that he's working for free, and Mississippi State is paying his salary. Knowing that and what he could bring into that defense whenever you have a Sunterian Perkins, when you have a T.J. Dudley, when you have a Chris Poop Hall, when you have those guys, that much talent um, set up in the linebacker room, with Pete Golding, who is the defensive coordinator, it's going to be nice that he'll have some somebody in the linebacker position that might be able to help out a little bit as well. Number three, on three, a co-defensive coordinator named Brian Brown. Uh, Brian Brown was the defensive backs coach at Cincinnati. He has a reputation around college football as being a bit of a ball hawk. Another defensive coach that will help out Pete Golding as you're trying to basically Frankenstein's monster together, a defense each and every year. These are some of the best names um, in college football with some of the most glowing reputations. B. Brown is known at, as a defensive coordinator that coaches the cornerback position. He is good at teaching players to be ball hawks. You will notice a lot of turnovers in the history of B. Brown. And you notice that he is going to be able to make that secondary more, let's see, they can take their chances more. They're going to be very aggressive and they're going to do all that. You have a situation where Pete Golding is really good at designing people up for the um, defensive line position. You have Zach Garnett, who is specializing at the linebacker position and B. Brown specializes in the back five. Now, Wes Neighbors is a really good coach as well. So is Randall Joyner. I don't want to shortchange this. It's about new coaches that are being brought in. And they help Ole Miss on the defensive side of the ball. And everybody's going to point out, it's like, well, both of the on-field coaches you've already named, Stu. And that's right. Because I think everybody needs to understand exactly where we sit right now in college football. Everybody is going to wonder about how they can change things and put the toothpaste back in the tube and get it back to the way it was in 2008. Everybody's trying to figure out ways to make rules to where all of this happens and it goes back to that. That's not the way this is going to work. You're going to have something in 10 years that's completely different than it is right now. But for success in right now's college football, you need the player personnel department. You need the general manager. You need people that work off the field because they can find the prospects that you are going to want to try to recruit in. You want a situation to where you're working harder, not smarter. You only have 10 on-field assistants and Lane Kiffin. You need the players that are brought to them, a very finite list of players to where there's just a certain way you can go, they can attack as a whole staff, and they've had a lot of success. You've seen over the last couple of years how they've had a lot of success. And Billy Glasscock um, coming in as the number two hire that Lane Kiffin has made in this offseason. Now, Zach Blackerby, God bless him. He heard, he heard rumors about Austin Thomas going to LSU. Um, well before ever, but that was a big rumor that was up there. And I was like, you, they were like, you need to worry about this. You need to freak out about this. And I was like, if I tell people why they need to freak out of this, I'm going to spend 15 minutes explaining why they need to freak out about this. This is not a position that is good for worry on the outside, but I am, I can explain the upside much more quickly. The GM basically does all the jobs that the head coach doesn't want to do. This is an ops part department on steroids. You take the player personnel side, you take the operation side, you meld them together. That's what the general manager does. And that's what Billy Glasscock is going to do. He has done a really good job in the transfer portal. They've always been consistently a top 10 program at Texas. Now, 
Texas is Texas. You know, I get that. But it is what it is. Looking at what's going on, it is a like for like with Austin Thomas. It is at least a net neutral with Austin Thomas leaving to go to LSU and Billy Glasscock taking over the deep general manager position at Ole Miss. It is not a loss whatsoever. We hit equilibrium there. This is where Ole Miss football went over equilibrium, and that is hiring Austin Brown. I think this is the top hiring of the offseason for Ole Miss. It's not a general manager, although he was the general manager at Southern Methodist. He is coming to be a high-ranking player personnel guy at Ole Miss. That's fine. The important thing is his skill set. Austin Brown is originally from Rice, which means that they've done a decent job of trying to find players outside the norm. So you've got one general manager that's coming from Texas that knows how to recruit just the big names that are out there. But you also have another guy that's going to fit that is good as finding those diamonds in a rough. It is a case of having your cake and eating it too. And Austin Brown has a chance to use his organizational ability for a lot of good for the Portal King and the Ole Miss Rebels. Now, everybody is going to talk about how Ole Miss is going all in for 2024. I'm going to do it too because they are putting, looking like all their effort into 2024. But when you see moves like um, Austin Brown, or not Alex Brown, sorry. Alex Brown. And when you see move, um, moves like Billy Glasscock, that isn't a move for the 2024 season. That is a move for the 2025 season and beyond. There's one transfer portal window that can be affected for 2024 as it sits now. After that, you're moving on to the next year. So you have a situation where Lane Kiffin is obviously building towards the future. That's something you can be excited about as well, Ole Miss fans, for anybody that's worried about Lane Kiffin moving on to his next stop. Because that's the that's the big thing that you see in the news right now. Oh, is this is this Chris Beard going to end up somewhere else? Is Lane Kiffin going to take another job? That is a that is a story that they're going to do over and over and over again. But this gives you an idea. If you're looking at tea leaves, Lane Kiffin is preparing for the future as well. Pretty excited about that. But those are the five coaches that I think that Ole Miss is doing the best with in this offseason. There's still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ole Miss baseball came alive this weekend and got a series win against rank South Carolina. When hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tool to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn just isn't another job board. It's a vast network of more than a billion professionals that makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to those professionals that you just can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 small businesses using LinkedIn for hiring? They can't be wrong. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV with the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. Now, 
Ole Miss got a series win over the South Carolina Gamecocks over the weekend. Um, Gunnar Dennis won the game on Friday, and Liam Dahl just absolutely shoved a little bit. Ole Miss had a dream eighth inning as well, and they ended up winning that game to clinch the series. Now, Ole Miss baseball is kind of at an interesting position. It's in a crossroads type position. You've got Andrew Fisher that's just knocking the cover off the ball. On Saturday night, he hit three home runs. Um, and then you have pitching that is developing on Friday and Saturday night. Now, as this moves forward, the next couple of weekends, Ole Miss goes at Tennessee. That'll be an interesting s- series. Tony Vitello is a psycho. He's, he's just psychotic. He's like the male Kim Mulkey, honestly. So we'll see how that goes. Tennessee's a really good team. They were top 10 ranked. We'll see if Ole Miss can string it together and continue along. Good baseball team. But we are seeing this team that when it went through its swoon, the second half of the Y season, into the next two games, that's four of their, was it five or six losses? And that kind of lets you know that maybe just the Hawaii trip was just a strategic error. It's just a situation that flying west, that kind of did Ole Miss in. Now, Ole Miss is going to lose some games. It's going to keep going. But I think Ole Miss is going to win some ball games as well. And going to Knoxville, the goal always on the road is one game on the road. Just don't get swept. You don't – you would like to sweep at home, but at least get two at home, and you want to get – you want to get one on the road. And if you do that – you're going to find yourself in an NCAA regional if you can win some non-conference games. Ole Miss has some games against USM, against Memphis, as they get into the heart of their SEC schedule. I I like where Ole Miss is right now. Now, are the Ole Miss going to win every game? No, no. It, you don't have a 50-10 and 10 type baseball team showing up in Oxford, Mississippi, but you have a really good, really scrappy baseball team that has some star power and Andrew Fisher, Jackson Ross is a really good player. Luke Hill's coming alive. Tracing Hughes is coming alive. And they're starting to find some pitching. And if that happens, Ole Miss has a chance to be pretty good over the course of this season. Anyway, on Friday, by the way, I had to go to the emergency room. And I spent 24 hours in the hospital. I'm fine. We're all good. It's just one of those situations that happens from time to time when you have a brain tumor. Um, But when I was sitting in there, the guy next to me in the hospital, in the Winter Haven Hospital, was an Ole Miss fan that was obviously watching the Ole Miss baseball game as well, which that was kind of an interesting, weird, cool thought. Um, I hope he's okay. We never met, but he was obviously get worked up over winning a baseball game on Friday night. So anyway... I just wanted to say, tell that little story as well. We're going to keep going this week. Because of that, I may take it a little bit easy on some stuff. Just be patient over the next couple of weeks, and we'll see how that goes as well. Anyway, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day, or we have tons of good stuff for you this week. But for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top Sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On and the national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports today on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. It's also available on the free Fire TV channels app. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy, everyone.